Hello everyone and welcome to an extremely wet and an extremely cold Mertzplatz here in Belgium. We're here for the fourth round of this year's Telenet Super Prestige Cyclocross Series. Joining me for my first foray into Cyclocross coverage, my name's Rick McLaughlin and joining me is Jeremy Powers. Jeremy, conditions super, super tough out there. Yeah, for sure it is, Rick. It's a uh, it's a it's a classic proper motor today here in Belgium. Uh, if you're just joining us and you didn't see the women's race, well, no spoilers, but it's it's a proper muddy throwdown here. Lots of action in the pits, lots of on and off the bike, tons of treacherous conditions and technical features. So you're in for a good uh, a good bike race, and if you're a cyclocross fan, a proper cross today. Yeah, well, we started that broadcast by, by saying that, didn't we? The Strawberry Cross, as it's known, one of the uh, old school Belgian crosses. Really, really tough. Really uh, physical. As you say, lots of on and off the bike and technicality left, right, and center there. You were saying, though, that they, they've moved this race from a nearby town to, to where we are now. Yeah, the race is, uh, is the Strawberry Cross, uh, originally in Hoogstraten which uh, a race that I participated in, one that I did, and I remember uh, holding my hands uh, in my head, uh, or my head in my hands uh, after the race and basically just breaking down. We ran for more than 50% of the race, and uh, yeah, I was racing against Niels Albert, who I believe won that day, um, but this race has been a source of frustration for a lot of riders, including the organizers, because the race has had to move over three times. Um, you know, there was a problem. I think that the, the municipality took back the race in Hoogstrata, the course. Then they moved it to another place. It was a beautiful cross when it first started. Then it went to a place where none of the riders really liked. That's the year I raced it. Super muddy. Not that good, but it was great for the spectators. And then they finally have landed here in the town next to Hoogstrata in Merksplash in Belgium, which is just a uh, little bit south of the Dutch border up in that area of North Brabant, which is close to where the classic race of Hooger Haida and such is. So a race with a lot of history, but uh, a bit of a, a bit of a weird one for cyclocross, but it continues on. I believe the late 80s was when this race first started. But Rick, here's the classification of the Super Prestige. Yep, as a bit leads away, what a stellar season he's having ahead of Swick, Van Turenhart, Van der Haar, Kuhn, Kuipers, Mason, Van der Putte, Ortslore, Van der Bosch. Yeah, all about Ellie Isabel this year. In the Telenet Super Prestige Series, undefeated currently, three wins out of three for the Paul Sausen Bingo Rider. One of the big, big favourites today as well, but he's got his work cut out today, Jeremy, hasn't he? Yeah, for sure. Some of the riders uh, are going to be up at the World Cup uh, getting ready for that, which is tomorrow in France. Please join Rick and I on that, uh, on that feed as well tomorrow morning. We'll definitely be excited for that but today yeah i think uh, i think Eastbit's gonna have his hands full you know this is gonna be a hard race and it's gonna be really really uh strong field all around today rick <laughs> yep all to play for out there today as well as you say the shadow of the uci world cup tomorrow there's no even host one of the uh, lot of people talking about him this weekend as a big contender potentially this afternoon but yeah UCI World Cup racing tomorrow as well right here so shadow of that one does hang over weather shadows is also opportunity so some riders may fancy their chances today seeing Lauren Sweck there in the green for the Kralon Cordon we've got uh, Niels van der Poote here riding for the Alpes de Kunik program next to him in the east a bit next to him Kevin Kuhn and on the last rider on the start, I believe. There is Isabel, ready to go. Kevin Kuhn riding for Bart Wellens program. The last Kevin rider Kuhn, here. a rider that we, we kind of get the sense that we're yet to see the best of this season as well and could just be building into a bit of form as we get ready to go under starter's orders here. Belgium and Merck's Plus. And the fourth round of the Telenet Super Prestige Series gets underway. 
It is Niels van der Putten in the blue jersey of Alpes de Koenig in the centre of your screen. Absolutely rapid start. Isabeth just being shuffled back into the pack as if a turn to turn right here. Neuvenhoes leads them. Funny little start, uh, finish straight. This big turn halfway down it and then it's back on the gas as they head out onto the course proper. Really, Felipe really difficult one to judge. Yeah, Felipe Orts there in the Spanish national champs jersey, followed right there in the front. Niels van de Putte, the rider for Alpes and de Kunik, on the front, taking this one straight off the get go. Then you see, of course, we've got uh, Joris Neuvenhaus there riding for the Trek Balawasa team right there in second spot. So a good start for all these riders, clean through that really sketchy right hand turn on cobblestones right off the get. Yeah, Van der Putte and Neuvenhuis, two of the big, big horsepower riders you would expect to see out front early doors. There's Isabel in the red. Staying in touch with them, everybody through that first section cleanly, but Vanderpeer looking really, really strong at the start of this one. Yeah, the young rider still in university, finishing things up in school, if not already. Uh, got to know him quite a bit last year and know him from the circuit. Really strong young rider, kind of that next generation of crosser, but having a great start here and definitely on a good day. Look at the power output in the gap that he's already got. Yeah, and it is, is a bit up into second place. Now, the man who's yet to drop a round of this Super Prestige Series yet this year as Neuvenhuis comes in for a new bike and emerges back into second place. It's in Boston's there, the blue and uh, green kit there coming through. The rider that had a lot of success here in the U.S. A little bit of argy bargy going on there in the pits, just trying to get their, their, uh, their bearings as they go through this one. We've watched the women's race, Rick, and it gets really narrow in some of these sections, and there's a lot of tricky sections that are kind of doozies for these riders, especially on the cyclocross bikes. You can see just how challenging even this little embankment is. Yeah, it's had an absolute pace in the terrain this track all day, and really a game of two halves. They're out in the open here, tracks quite wide, and once they hit the woods, things narrow up as they head up the steps now. It narrows down in the woods becomes a bit more like a mountain bike course, a cross country course, a bit more single track, a bit more technical. But this half of the course, really in that elite women's race, is where we saw those riders with big reserves of power do the damage, just as we're seeing in this one. Isabel, third wheel at the minute. It's Neuvenhuis. Moves past Van der Putte. Joris Neuvenhuis, we were talking before the show, really looking for a result here, but you see Vincent Boston's there in third, uh, fourth spot. So yeah, Jurgen Kuiper's there coming through, some of the riders from the Craylon Cordon team. There's quite a few hitters in this one right at the beginning of this race already. Let's see how it plays out, but but uh, definitely could be a shuffling of the deck, but I am impressed by Vincent Boston's, the Belgian there, riding with that lime green helmet and that blue jersey with such a strong start. Would you have expected to see Lauren Swick maybe further up the field early doors in this, and we'll see him at the minute? I would. I would expect Sweck. Uh, he's had a little bit of an up and down season compared to last year, where he was ridiculously dominant. Um, but uh, but de never count out the, the Belgian. Sweck has got a, a real opportunity here, especially in the Super Prestige. And we know he's a fighter, but you know everything can happen in a cross season. You can uh, you, know, you can have an illness, you can have a problem going on. But there he is coming through, and you can see the camera focused on him. Surprise! That number three there on his back, so far back as we get into one of these very technical sections now. Right? Yeah, second place Swig in the Super Prestige overall as we get underway today. 45 points, Isabel leads the way, Swig on 31 behind him, so well in the hunt. But up front, it is Neuvenhuis and Van der Putte leading the way for the Barwasa Trek, Lions and Alpes and de Koenig. There's Isabel in third, Spaniard in fourth. What a season he's having. Yeah, he is on the podium just recently, and uh, really, really happy with that, as you see Neuvenhaus, but look at Niels van der Putte riding that section. First rider that I've seen clean that section, Rick. Super comfortable as well, looking more than at home here. That, uh, <coughs> van der Putte. He's ahead back onto the wider section. This little right-hander caused carnage in that elite women's race at various points. There's a big rut at the base of what you need to get into, and this is where I say it starts to... There's definitely time to be lost a plenty through this section in the woods, Jeremy. Yeah, for sure. To me right now, Vendaputa looks to be riding stronger and faster than, um, than his counterpart there uh, in Joris Neuvenhaus riding for the Trek Balawasa team, so I think right now... Oh. Ooh. And that is how quickly it can go wrong. Front end just lost, and the ripples don't go too far back behind them, but 
Yep, as we said in that elite women's race, cyclocross really unique at ground, you know, in, in cycling formats in terms of, you know, a time gap can seem big, but just one mistake like that, and all of a sudden it evaporates in front of your very eyes. Neuvenhaus leading the way now. Van der Poot is Jens. still in second. Yeah, that was Jens Adams that had a little bit of a mistake there on that tricky, uh, tricky section that we saw. And you can see that's Mies Hendricks there riding for the Craylon Cordon team. That's again, Vince Boston's coming through there just now in about sixth place. So right now at the head of the race, Van de Poot on the left hand side of your screen and on the right, Joris Neuvenhaus. You saw it as a bit hanging right off the side of the bike there, trying to keep it moving forward. Does well. Into your top four. Ben and Bosch there on the left hand side of your screen as he comes through for the Craylon Corridon team. You've got uh, both of Bart Wellens' riders there coming through, trying on the right hand side, Kevin Kuhn, as well as Jurvin Kuipers riding for the uh, riding for that program and trying to do everything that they can. You see off the bike there for uh, for Kevin Kuhn there, just trying to get through. Sorry, yeah, excuse me, number, fif number 15 is Tice Arts there riding for the Circus Technor team. Muscling his way through there. Neuvenhaus gets rid of the riding glasses. Both the leaders refusing to head in for a bike change. Ezerbit takes a fresh one, as does Orts. Busy day for the mechanics out there, Jeremy, as well. Yeah, super busy, Rick. They're, on, they're doing everything that they can to keep these riders you know, with good momentum moving forward, but it's going to be crazy in the pits. You can just see the chaos there already in the back. You know, One bike, one hand, one mechanic's taking a bike. The other one has to grab and throw one out. So Toon Vandenbosch there coming through on the right-hand side of your screen, riding for the Craylon Cordon team. Very strong rider. Let's see if he can make up a little bit of ground. But right now, I'm impressed by Niels Vandepute. Yep, Vandepute looking really, really comfortable in second place. Alberson de Koenig really a proven ground for some of the world's best cycling talents, both on and off-road. Vandepute, the latest in a long line as they head into the sand. Ivan Huys though looking extremely strong there, but look at the gap that Vanderpoort has managed to close down on him behind him. There is Elizabeth. Third place at the minute. He's won all three of the previous rounds of Super Prestige. Orts muscling his way through on the BH. Oh. So close, so close. Or it's one of the technically most gifted riders on the cyclocross circuit. I mean, there's not a thing that he can't do. Uh, technical section, he can't ride. Wheelie that he can't ace. Uh, he's so good, but you see just back here, just, uh, you know, literally like five, six places back, how much carnage there is. Everyone like Domino's having to get off the bike. Dan Suta there riding through that section. A handful of riders kept unable to ride that. Most of the riders though having to hop off. Sweck, not on a good day today. No, we had talked about earlier on the broadcast, we would expect to see Swick a bit higher up here, maybe the sort of, the flatter nature of the course compared to some of those that we go to later in the season may have suited him better, but he's really been caught out by the pace of Van der Poote and Neuvenhuis out the front. Too bad to see, because he's a course that he's obviously done really well on. He's been able to win this race last year, so yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a bit surprising. Swick not in this one today. But uh, never see never. You never count a, a champ out like that. But this race for the top three right now, you can see this guy's been knocking on the door right now. Joris Neuvenhaus riding for the Trek Balawas Alliance. Niels Van der Poote there. But all of these riders, though, Rick, they can put together the full hour. So I would expect that this is going to ebb and flow at the front. Yeah, Neuvenhaus on that uh, Balawas Trek squad full of young talent. And uh, maybe just keen to emerge out from the shadows of some of it. Um, as we look back, there is Swig. Yeah, maybe just uh, keen to uh, write his own name large today, Neuven House. Who can blame him on a day like today? About as soft and as tough as a cross course gets this one. Neuven House, Van der Poot, uh, Isabit are your top three. Could bury a bit further back in the pack than we might have expected as well. Neuvenhuis looking super strong in the opening part of this lap, Jeremy. Yeah, I think for Neuvenhuis, it's just technically he's just got to continue to grow. And he's got a little bit of work to do because right now Easterbit's still kind of hunting back there. So let's just see as we go. Uh, the, you guys are all going to go out for a break and we're just going to take a little keep on here with the digital team. Oh, 
just a little stall there from Isabel. Grabs a bit of the board into the side of the course just to steady the ship. That has cost him time though. Mountain House goes for another bike. coming in you can see just got a one step two step three step four step boom right on the bike hits the inside of that leg and then he's right on his machine again Vandepoota in a really good rhythm here but seems to be right at the top of his level this is the pace that Vandepoota is going to be able to continue on at he's going to have to let Joris Neuvenhaus go if this is the pace that he's going to go at and I think technically speaking just going to have to see if uh, Neuvenhaus can continue to gain time in those technical sections or if he has to give up a little bit to the uh, to the Belgian rider behind him Niels van der Putte, or if he's going to continue on with this pace and just continuing to uh, to churn out these lap times lap after lap yeah we did see uh, we did see that high initial pace in elite women's catch some of those big riders out towards the end of the race but of course that's as tough as this it can pay the price late in the day so by no means out of it now it's a bit safely down. You can see that big rut forming halfway down that slope. It's a bit absolutely seamless off the bike, over the shoulder, up the steps, or it's keeping them on a scoop just behind them. Rest Neuven House at the lead of this one. Just continuing on as uh, as we see this is what's to be. Or our team they're going to be focusing here again. On, uh, on some of the riders that are trying to come up. Not all of them at the front as expected, but Joris Neuvenhaus, I was just saying, just re-upped his contract with the Balawasa Trek Lions for two more years. So he's switching over from the road where he was riding for, at the time, um, the Sunweb program uh, for quite a few years. He was in the Dutch team, DSM, I guess, is technically the overarching. He rode for a couple different iterations of that. Switching over exclusively to cyclocross, uh, I think two years ago and had good success it's where he had success as a, as a younger rider and he's continued on and he's really uh you know he's starting every year a little bit better a little bit better but at the top end of this sport man it's a uh, it's a pointy mountain rick really really committed into that rut there neuvenhuis see van der put through it it's just the constant speed is so impressive. Just that ability to judge when to hop off the bike at exactly the right time and keep things moving at the same pace. Neuvenhaus looking extremely strong at the front of this one. There's third place, Ellie is a bit. Felipe Orts right in the whole way up there, the Spaniard. Yeah. Technically, Orts is just so good. You can see that's the type of stuff I'm talking about. He's, he's invincible on the bike. He's like, a, you know, he's a little, little bit like Pitcock in this way. He just seems to defy gravity, Rick. Van der Putte though, second place at the minute for the Alpes and the Koenig rider on the Canyon bike. Looking extremely composed. Elias a bit leading the way in the overall in the Super Prestige so far this season. Undefeated. Needs to get a move on if he wants to ride himself back to the front of this race. Checks over the shoulder, sees Felipe Ort still in close contention. Spaniard so technically strong. This will suit him today. Yeah, sure will. Uh, he's got a good opportunity here. Um, Felipe Orts, you know, he's, he's was such an advocate for the World Cup that went down um, in Spain last year uh, in, the, in the January part of the season where we saw this great battle in the men's race between uh, between Matthew Vanderpool and Wout Van Aert. We also saw on the women's side, Puck Petersa and Finn Van Empel go head to head. It was awesome, and he was just a big proponent of that track. He really brought a lot of energy to it. He continued this year with a huge ride uh, just two weeks ago to land on the podium for the first time in many moons. You see Van put, put out there. I have a feeling that Easterbit's going to be continuing to gain here on uh, on these riders, and perhaps even making a run for the front now, right? I was just about to say, it looks like he's stretching the elastic band back to Ort slightly from that last shot that we saw that gap to me maybe only a second couple of seconds bigger than it was but it looks like he's making a move towards the front of this race now it is a bit and those two at the front they must know that he is the form rider and it is all about where he is in the race and getting ahead of him staying ahead of him absolutely key to a good result today yeah for sure but Neuven House out right now, really putting down a serious pace, not playing any games here. Right from the get-go, it was clear that he's, he's on a good day and he really wants to put it together. 
You see some of the some of the stalwarts here. Fifth spot, Urban Kuipers, really really good young talent. Whoa. Whoa. Did his best to come off there, manages to save it. Will get back on in the wrong gear. But you can see just how tough the conditions are out there. I wouldn't rule out Jurgen Kuipers for something special here, too. A potential podium run. I mean, he's got he's got the caliber, he's got the motor to do it. Um, also, Corny Van Kessel is in there. That's Mies Hendricks there on the bottom right of your screen, followed by his teammate Laura Sweck. Just behind him, Mies Hendricks, a young rider, also riding for the Kralon Cordon team. As we see Orts now in the pits, Easter been just slogging through the mud there from the uh, from all the white washed bikes that's just making it super heavy through that section. Yeah, taking a little bit of grass there to help. Clear the tires, Jeremy. I am, of course, brand new to cyclocross, and I'm going to throw a dart on the board here and assume that mud tires, as as treaded as they get, and as low pressure as it gets today, the only tire choice out there. Am I right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. You're riding a, a super mud, an FMB super mud, or a Dugas Rhino, or something variated variation of that. Um, probably really low tire pressure, you know, in that uh, 15 to 20 psi range, depending on the weight of the rider. Someone like Easterbit going to be lower than someone like Neuvenhaus or Vendaputa. Both these riders through this nasty sand section riding. So really, really good to see both of them evenly matched through there. That's the thing about cross at this level, Rick. You got to, if, if someone else, you know, rides this, you have to match them. If you don't match them, you lose time and you lose, uh, you lose more momentum. But Vendaputa coming back for this duel between Joris Neuvenhaus and Vandepuda. So this race, far from over right now. I tell you what, Orts is hanging in there behind Isabel as well. He's not letting them out of his sights, but just unbelievable just how much control those riders have. And they were both axles wanting to go in different directions to keep things moving forward through the sand. The Deschart Hensmaas rider behind there, Corne van Kessel uh, in fifth spot right now. Awesome ride for him. He's He's not been in the front like this in a major cross for some time. And so, yeah, he's a per constantly in the top 10, but he's knocking on the door here with Jurgen Kuipers and some of the other riders that are kind of vying for that last spot on the podium. So that's great to see as well. You see the mud through this section well over rim deep. As this chasing group looks to find a bit of momentum. Easier said than done though today. Neuvenhaus looks across. We'll see the time and screen. He leads them across the line. On the third lap then. 17.39. Van der Putten, 10 seconds the gap currently. Absolutely nothing in sight across terms. There is Isabel and Orts, Orts gritting the teeth. So 27 and 29 seconds respectively behind the leader. Niels van der Putten in second. Fifth currently to Kuipers, then it's Van Kessel. And I have to say, this group looking like they've kind of stopped battling between each other and trying to get a bit of forward momentum. There's Swake back in nine, further back than we expected, certainly to see him. Then Kuhn, 12th, ahead of him, Adams. This man leads them for Trek Balwas Alliance, Joris Neuvenhuis. Heads for a fresh bike. See how tough it is even to get into that tech area. Yeah, he's doing everything that he can. Everything coming off like a, like a super pro. As we see a little bit of distance between Felipe Orts and Eli Gizabit. Right now, though, it's very good uh, very good form for Felipe Orts. Uh, last weekend on the 11th of November was uh, third place in the Yamacht Cross in Niel, which is also in Belgium, part of the Super Prestige. One of his first podiums that I remember in some time at that level. One wins Ooh. a ton of races down in Spain and in these other areas. But got a big swap on there. Orch trying to get into that Texan to make it across to that new bike. Neuven House up the steps now. Let's see what that gap back to Van der Poot is. It's looking healthy, you know. I think he's going for it here. 
could have extended a little bit on that last section. It's, it's interesting. We saw this in the women's race, Rick, where there's one half of the track. You can see that riders really excel because it's really broken up like that. This is a traditional cross on this half of the track where you just put the power out and you just focus on the, the ruts that are there. But on the second side, there's sand. There's a really technical forest section, that single file with deep ruts and steep technical embankments. So it really is two halves here at this track here in Merck's Pass. Yeah, we definitely saw it split that race in two, didn't we? The gaps would extend on the technical sections, often only to be reduced whenever the big hitters could tap the power on the second half of the lap. Neuvenhuis in. Out front. Looking good. See, just battling to get clipped back into that pedal there. So, so tough whenever these shoes fill with mud, the soles of them. Trying to find those pedals again, get clipped in successfully. An art form all by itself. Hangs a leg off around that rut, straight up the climb. Yeah, they'll have practiced that in all of their training. Uh, you see oftentimes the, the Trek Balawasa team has one of the most professional training. They go to a big forest, the whole team comes out, everybody's there, Sven's there, the coaches all for technique, rhythm, timing, starts, uh, on, off the bike, sand, everything is done. These, these trainings are really well known in the cyclocross community and somebody exactly like Joris Neuvenhaus is going to really benefit from them having spent so many years not racing oh. across this Easter bit really throws himself down that Easter one. bit really going to the riders right hand side there on that little drop in Orts often running behind him Whew. Easter bit taking some risk there for the third spot on the podium right now in the middle part of this race it's uh it's good to see it means the adrenaline's flowing <laughs> yeah definitely is Eliezerbet would like to make a four out of four, but he's got two big performances ahead of him in Van der Putte and Neuvenhaus. Just delicately on his feet there, around the trees on the inside, making the course as short as possible. Orts is hanging in there behind Eliezerbet, but as I say, the elastic band is stretched a wee bit. Yeah, did you see how clean he was over that section though? He rode it, he rode two, three seconds faster than Easter bit there. So if you're wondering why that's yo-yoing back oh. and forth. Van der Putt adjusting the deck momentarily. Sorry, Jeremy. No, no, that's all right. That's gonna happen in these, this type of cross, but you can see how good Felipe Orts is. I, I don't want to beat a dead horse as the saying goes, but man, he's just technically, he's riding everything where Easter bit's getting off. He's, he's putting time back into him and he's riding so consistently. This is the section where we saw Vandeputa just slip on a rut there. Just there boom, go, yeah. right there. Tree root looked like he just tired, or foot didn't didn't grab enough grip, and he just quick down on the knee. But that's that's going to be the least of your problems in a cross like this, Rick. You're going to be all over the place. Ivan Hoysnight running. That section just but the other side of his barrier out of shot of our cameras must be extremely beaten up to see him off the bike for that length of time. Here's a chase and Vandeputa behind him. Saw Vandeputa going very wide there, looking for that green grass. Now he's on this very treacherous section. Look at that rear tire just tracking, yeah. trying to get that grip as we see Orts now in that really deep mud, trying to do everything that he can to just fend off this uh, this strong move here from Easterbit as they come into that really technical section now. There is a big hole just on that side of the course as well. And we are back, and it is the fourth round of the Super Prestige Cyclocross Series in Mertz Place in Belgium. And it is an absolutely filthy day here. A proper, proper cyclocross race unfolding in front of our eyes. Niels van der Poot, second place currently. And yours, Neuvenhuis. And there's a man in third place, undefeated so far in Super Prestige, Ali Isabel. And he has been stalked every inch of the way. And Felipe Orts, the Spaniard, who opts not to take a bike, stay out. 
He'll get back a little bit of time here, Rick, and he'll be able to come back to Easter bit. And that, you know, psychologically, we talked a lot about it in the women's race, but it's going to be really good for him to be right on the wheel of Ely Easter bit as he focuses on trying to get another third place on the podium like he did last weekend and Neil at the Super Prestige. That very historic race, very technical track in Neil, the Yamaha Cross. He's here today uh, doing the same thing as you see a little bit of a back stretch there yeah. from Niels Van Apute. A bit of a back stretch, but it's clever riding for Mortis, isn't it? He knows that the, he knows the form that Isabet is in, and if anybody is going to be able to drive him across the front of the race, it is that man, the Belgian, in front of him. Yeah, Orts likes to leave a small gap. He doesn't like to be right up on the, the rear tire of the of the rider in front of him because technically he knows how good he is. So he doesn't want to run up on someone if he's right behind them, if they have to get off. He likes to give himself that little bit of a buffer traditionally so that he can potentially go around something or react to it uh, because he is technically so gifted. It just seems like his motor this year is just one click, just a little bit better. And he's been able to really come into his own and start to, uh, start to hit the podium on some of these big European races, which we absolutely love to see because it's always dominated by the Belgian and Dutch riders and so to see a Spaniard up there on the podium it's really cool for the internationalization of the sport. There's Lawrence Swig the rider that we were predicting might be might have been further towards the front of this one than it's turned out but still looking extremely strong looks like he's breaking free of this group now. Yeah, yeah. we know he's got the pedigree just a slower start than we would have expected but perhaps focused on the last half of the race here getting his rhythm figuring out the lines that he wants to choose and uh, is looking at the last 30 minutes to do some damage instead of the uh, the first 30. There is the race leader. Boys crosses the line, 26 minutes deep into this one on the lap four. The halfway point, eight rounds of course to play for. Super prestige. Just have a look behind Van der Poota here and see when we will see the chasing is about. You see a gel just in the shorts there, right on cue. He whips it out, <laughs> and now the Spaniard has got past this a bit. So Orts, maybe Eli is bit just letting him do a bit of the work. Jeremy, is that how it works? No, nope, straight past him again. I just think that Orts is kind of the thorn in Eli Isterbit's side for this podium spot right now. Isterbit. He's a very aggressive rider. I do think that with the World Cup tomorrow, he's, he's maybe not burning the entire pack of matches like he normally would in a Super Prestige, but he knows with the lead currently that he's got to continue on. But he's got a good gap. He's got a strong competitor. I expect that that place for that spot on the last spot on the podium is going to come down to a last lap duel. Unless someone like Lauren Sweck makes it up there, that, that could really spice up that last third spot on the podium. Yeah, and I guess as well, you know, Boxing Clever, he knows that Joris Neuvenhuis is 11th in the overall for Super Prestige at the minute, as they're about leading the way quite handsomely in that competition. So maybe, maybe just maybe keep a little bit of fire in the belly for tomorrow. You see I World Cup, of course. See just how churned up things are at the top of that climb as this a bit steps off the bike, battles to get back on, lets Orts through. Oh, mentally that's gonna be rough for Easterbit because he's, he's just look at this, he just comes across that's it's it's a strange move for such a for such a rider like that. He, you can see him shaking his head in frustration. I mean it's so muddy out there, Rick, that it's just this is what happens in in these uh in this uh, in this kind of racing is like you, you make mistakes that you wouldn't ever make in, in training or anything but it's just the bikes getting thrown all over the place right now so easter bit back on his machine he's a big top rider he's not going to have that bust him up too much he's got felipe orts which he knows is on good form from last weekend and neil he's going to be doing everything that he can to just minimize the gap and stay right on his wheel to make sure that felipe orts knows that Ely easter bit is still on his tire well we're not seeing a whole lot of this man that's because he's doing everything out. Moving house, there's Swick in to get a bike. And it's a bit still battling behind Orts now. Just a couple of mistakes starting to creep in from Ellie Isabet, the Belgian. Oh, Orts has an opportunity here though. He's, he's, this isn't the end of the race, but you can see him give a glance back there over his shoulder. He can put these sections together technically and continue to extend this gap without having to use any additional power. He may just get Ely Easterbit to give up, which would be a 
which would be great for Orts to be able to be on the podium two times in a row. It's not a fluke. He's got the form. He's got the technical ability. Orts, very exciting. Swig up the stairs. Well, Mark's class proven to be absolutely brutal as ever. The strawberry cross there is Van der Putte, second place currently behind Joris Neuvenhuis for Alpesen de Koenig. And just watch him through this drop here. It's a big tip in section into a right hander and back up the hill again. Swings the leg off, dismounts cleanly. There's your race leader. The Dutch fans yelling there for Joris Neuvenhaus as he comes through, just kind of tatters his way through, gets that weight on that rear tire. Watch this section from Felipe Arts. Is he going to try to ride it? No, he's going to pop right off right, so too, hard. Yeah, I have to make the call quite late in the day to get off the bike, but still ahead of his, but crucially, still in third place, Orts. And that would be a big scalp to take, wouldn't it? He'd be happy with that. I think he's going to be happy even with whatever the outcome is to be in the hunt for a podium position at a Super Prestige two weeks in a row. Uh, that's that's in it. <laughs> you know, that's a proper, you're a cyclocrosser. And like I said, not having a, uh, a nationality of being from Belgium or the Netherlands to be in the uh, uh, podium contention, you don't see it often. And so, uh, you know, we've been watching this rider, Felipe Orts, for Look so long, the Spanish champ. That's This is where he's making that time up, Rick. That's where he's doing the damage. Straight over there. Not a bother to him. Orts grits the teeth, gulps the air in. Yeah, we've seen it with uh, Cam Mason this season as well from Great Britain, obviously. So hard to beat the, the dominance of the Belgians and the Dutch in international cyclocross racing, but great to see another nationality have a good go at it. Orts just taking a look over his shoulder there. Iserbit realizing that he's got an opportunity here. He can't let this one go. He knows that this is a battle between the Spanish champion. He needs to continue to stay in his wheel. If he wants to hit the podium there, he's got it. But watch now the focus of Joris Neuvenhaus as he just tries to hit this very narrow line to ride this section. If you get off this track, you go right off the bars. We've seen it happen throughout the women's race and the men's race. This section, although it doesn't look technical, it's really, really narrow line through there. Beautiful work on the bike there from Joris. You can just see all the thousands of little adjustments to his body weight, his body position, keeping the thing moving forward. There's a second place man behind him. Van der Putte. This section getting really, really churned up now out in the open. Is it looking like he's really having to dig deep to stay with Orts here? Yeah, I think there's two things. I think uh, Easterbit not not gonna go uh, into the into the relo into the relo meter. He's gonna just he's gonna ride a tempo today, but he's not gonna go so deep so that he doesn't have anything for tomorrow's World Cup. He needs to stay focused on that as well. He traveled all the way to the U.S. to be able to race there, and he's got a he's got an overall as well tucked in there. So he's gonna do what he can to uh, to battle back to Orts, but he knows that there's a big battle tomorrow as well. Yeah, UCI World Cup racing from France tomorrow. Right here, do not miss it. But time being, the Dutchman, Neuvenhuis, leading the way. He's got the poker face on as well, Jeremy Hasnay. It's the look of absolute concentration. Yeah, he's going to come down, do that 180 there, come up over the top of that knoll, and then he's going to be going into the sand again. You can always tell kind of lap to lap how the riders are doing uh, with what sections they're able to ride versus where they have to get off. This is a great example. Eli Easterbit there choosing to run that section and not have to do the really heavy load on his legs and turn those watts out. Let's see how Neuvenhaus rides this sand because this is an area where you can really see kind of is the uh, is the fatigue building up uh, lap after lap or are they continuing to ride super strong? Neuvenhaus is through that easily. Let's super see how uh, Niels Van Puta comes through next. Super impressive through there, Neuvenhaus. You can see both wheels seldom pointing in the same direction through the sand. There's a chasing pack behind them. Kuipers there, right on the wheel of uh, Laurent Swag. Here we go. This is what you asked for. Ben de Puta. A little slal harder there, you can see. Yeah, slalomed his way across the middle, up it a wee bit, and having to dab his way back over. Here comes Orts, though, behind him. Yeah. 
Quartz has been strong in the sand today as well. We knew that already, and look at this. Yeah, that's the big test. That's the big test for me, where you can Whoa. see how did they come through it. Vanderfoot just tagged that first board on the way through. It's a bit now off and running as well. This one heating up nicely towards the second half of it. I say heat, everything's relative out there. There's not much of it kicking around. It's a bit making heavy weather. The first board just gets over the second one. There's Swig and Kuipers. Swig, superb for the sun. Kuipers, last, uh, last weekend, fifth place in the elite in the uh, in Dendermonde, the 23-year-old from Belgium. He's been, uh, yeah, he won the Kermes Cross in Ardoia, kind of a Thursday midweek race. He won the GP Oysterik up in the Netherlands also this year. Won a Swiss, or got second in a Swiss Cross earlier this year, but his rise through the ranks, I think, in his dominance uh, last year in the kind of the, some of the smaller crosses uh, landed him onto the pro team here managed by Bart Wellens. And um, yeah, he's, he's continued to just make uh, make waves with, uh, with his age and with his trajectory. Ridley bike just getting away from us a bit. Second place, Van der Putter across the line in 35 seconds. The gap now to Neuvenhuis. So, Trek Balwas Alliance rider cracking on. Third place for Felipe Orts so far. 48 seconds off the lead of the race. Eliasman checks the watch. Crosses a line in fourth place. A couple of unforced errors in that last lap telling you how hard he's having to dig today. Kuipers going ahead now of Laurent Swake. Swake having to do everything that he can to be able to stick on the uh, the young Belgian's rider, the young Belgian rider's wheel. So we see now it's this rider at the front here doing everything that he can to just continue to maintain his gap. Joris Neuvenhaus riding super strong. Kuipers on the front here, this group with Swake. So everybody coming through here. This chase group, this is a big group now for uh, for seventh through about tenth. And how, how easy is it to be in a group like this and get caught up in racing the, the riders around you and not really moving forward in the race? You'd be doing everything that you can, as you see Wietse Muse in there, kind uh, of at the end, tattered onto that group. Um, you know, you're going to be racing this group, but it's going to come down. You're going to want to just follow, follow everybody's lines in front of you, stay in the group. And these riders now, in the last 15 minutes of this race, are going to do everything that they can to try to dispatch one another. So I do expect some kind of uh, forward momentum from that group behind. Leuven Hoist at the front of the race, up the steps, lap five out of seven. They're second place, Neil van der Putter, the Belgian. Through the tech zone, fresh bike. Felipe Orts, the Spaniard, third place behind him. Elias a bit. Belgian in fourth. Looking like he could be heading towards his first super prestige defeat of the year so far, is a bit. But still, as we've come to expect from him, so feisty, always in amongst it. Look at the size of those ruts through there now. Swig heads to the tech zone to take a fresh bike. Comes back in just behind Kuipers. This group with Jens Adams, Kevin Kuhn, some of the top riders in the sport doing work here to try to be able to get to, to stay in this overall, the super prestige. It's not chump change to take the overall or to be in the top 10 of this one in the final, Rick. There's a lot of money on the line for the for the rider that wins this and for the top five, 10 places, there's, there's quite a bit of coin. So each of these riders here thinking about that overall in this very prestigious series with so much history in the sport. This is this is as big as it gets for a crosser. You know, if you're in the super prestige, the X20 Bod Commerce Trophy, or if you're in the World Cup, all of these have a lot, hold a lot of weight in this sport. Levin House really, really good into that big compression there. He sits out to the riders left a lot more than the riders in second and third place behind them. Both of them heading over the riders right and going a bit more towards the inside. But it's about finding your own groove on a day like today, finding the lines that work for you. 
This is where Orts really shines. You can see he's riding sections that other riders aren't. You can see those big, deep kind of holes from everybody's feet going up that section there. Uh, and this is, uh, like I said, this section here really reminds me of the track in Namur uh, in Belgium, in the, near the French-speaking part of the country, where we see at the Citadel, the very treacherous track, these steep off-camber bits. There's a lot of hidden things in here. This section in particular, we've seen get problems, but Neuvenhaus hasn't really put a foot wrong today. You know, small slip here and there, but in general, riding a super consistent, very well within himself today. He's been absolutely faultless so far from what we've seen of him. But yeah, this section, as treacherous on foot as it is in the bike in a lot of places, very, very uneven ground. That's the first real mistake we've seen from Van to put it up there as well. So, cracks starting to show as he continues to chase down this man at the front, Neuvenhuis. There's the man in third place who has been absolutely spellbound him through this really, really tricky last part of the course. Orts, followed by Isabet. Just the fact that Orts is riding some of these, <laughs> some of these sections on, on a cross bike with 33 tires is uh, something. Watch him come through this. He hits that outside line. And you can just see just the stability on the bike and the way he's coming into it. I mean, there's still another 12, you know, rate minutes of racing to go here. And I think there's an opportunity for Orts to potentially even come closer to Vanderpool. You see it coming there in, he in is. the view now. Yep. And we said it before. Seeing the rider in front of you such a crucial part of uh, bike racing gives you that extra impetus that extra little bit of power deep in a race that can make the difference is a bit that gap to orts has gone out now so we get a replay of Kuipers. Oh. Oh. that's gonna not take many, time yeah not many times you see an over the bars uphill crash but there's one <laughs> Like I Kuipers. said, that just, that's 20 seconds. That's tough. Kuipers cleanly out the front door, up that really steep little punch. Neuvenhuis, though, still moving. And you can see, yes, how muddy that section is from all the water draining off that bike wash. But Mortz now has Vander put it in his sights, and that's come right down, Jeremy. It certainly has, and I'm gonna I'm gonna go out on a limb, and I don't think that uh, I don't think that Felipe Orts has ever been in uh, better than third spot in a Super Prestige. I, I want to say that it was his first time on the podium there at, at this level of race last weekend. Now he's coming for one better. The Spanish rider, he's fifth uh, in Mas Mechelen, uh just uh, already this year in the World Cup. He's definitely on a really good string of form technically. I have no question saying he is one of the best cyclocross riders that we've seen technically over these last years. He's been knocking on the door so close, didn't quite have the depth in the finals of the race. He's proving everyone wrong here, the Spanish rider really coming into his own, showing everybody in the world that he's capable of these world-class rides. As Van Puta goes sideways, you can see Orts just continuing to push through there. See how hard they're having to fight just to stay in control of the bikes. As Isabet comes in, grabs bike a fresh up high. bike, straight over the shoulders. That's how muddy that exit is getting from all the water that's draining off from the bike washes. If Easterbin wants to have a chance at the podium, he's going to need to do some work here in the next five, six minutes to be able to try to come back. But I, I'm not sure it's going to be possible for the uh, for the Belgian rider to be able to, to bring this one back. I think this race is out. I think Joris Neumannhaus has got the big gap. I do think that race for second and third, though, with Felipe Orts and a fading, a little bit fading Niels van der Poote is still possible. Van der Poot, uh, yep, coming into the clutches of Orts now, deep into the race here in Merck's Plus. Oh no, I don't like to see this. Oh, straight out the front. Well, we saw somebody go out the front up that slope, and now we see somebody go out the front down that slope as we look at Orts reining in Van der Poot at the front of this one. He's in the line. Can he ride it? Orts continuing to churn that big gear. Has to put a foot down, though, and just, just scooter his way slightly. across. Yeah, just bobble slightly. Over the board safely. This one looking like it's going to go down to the wire. Nice no, no, again. Just looks over. Down onto the drops, heads towards lap six. 
walk the back gap going to look like behind him now my guess is fairly healthy as we look back there is second place the blue jersey of Alpes and de Koenig Niels van der Poot Apologies there. I did think it was going to say uh, six of seven. I thought there was a little little less time to go. So with 15 minutes to go, I, I revise that I, I do believe that Orts is going to catch Niels Vandaputa for that second spot, which I believe will be uh, will be his best finish potentially ever in a super prestige race. So a little bit of history here for uh, for for Spain for for Felipe Orts today coming into this one, coming close to second spot on the podium as he's going to duel this one out with Niels Vandaputa. My guess is they're going to connect here on this lap. Jeremy, you've been there, you've done it. How difficult is it that, you know, this late in a race, not to start thinking about those results, not to start thinking about <laughs> those career bests and to just get on with the job at hand? Does it start to enter your head or? I think uh, as a rider, you're always, you're all, you, you, you get the momentum of it if you think about it for one second, but you just can't lose your focus. It only can be, it can only propel you, but on these career rides, you know, you, you really, you think about a lot of things and that's what gives you the energy. I mean, look, for Niels Vendepute, the 23-year-old Belgian here riding for Alpeson, he's also going to be thinking about how great of a ride this is. Whether he's second or third, I think both of them will be happy with that result. They're not always on the podium, so both of them are fighting for, uh, for you know, their, their spot in the sport right now. And I, uh, you know, I, I'd say just don't lose your concentration. I think that's the big thing you think about is just don't think about it too much. You know, let it, let it, let it jump in, but also meditate it right out. Get right back to the, to the, uh, to the task at hand. All right, from the, from the Dutchman of Neuvenhuis. Neuvenhuis, excuse me. 52 seconds to the good ahead of the Belgian van der Putten. Five seconds between him and Hort, so the Jaws music's definitely on. Kuhn, Jens Adams, Lander Lox, all there coming through. Wietse and Musen, you see the big flag out there for the tall Belgian rider in, top, in the 10th there. That's Corne van Kessel coming through in 11th spot, riding for the Dissoff Hens Moss team at the front now. Joris Neuvenhaus continuing to do damage here in Merckx Looking so strong today, Neuvenhaus, isn't he? Motoring across there. Here is the battle for second place. Van der Putte ahead of Orts. Change his bike, is a bit just coming into shot now in the red helmet. I think if I'm Orts, you just want to finish this one off. You know what I mean? You want to finish this one off strong uh, without any mistakes and ride within yourself and not try to do anything, uh, not try to do anything crazy. Play it, play it as it as it is, but uh, continue to play the hits, you know? Same lines, same tempo, same everything. Just try to hit it lap after lap after lap and stay consistent. Vanderpoot is digging deep now. And there is his pursuer, Orts. Just one mistake oh. from the big Belgian could bring that man right into play. Good race on our hands here, Rick. It's not out of it's not out of sight, out of mind. I think Orts is, you know, he's put oh. some time into Easterbit. Easterbit a little sideways. Watch this is the technical section. It's very treacherous through here. I like that line that Northern House has ridden all race. That wider line that just delivers him onto that little punch perfectly in time to dismount. Orts just cleaning off the tires slightly on the grass there. Can see his man. Has been able to for a while. Just can't seem to do anything about that gap at the minute. There's the race leader. Safely through another section checked off for Joris Neuvenhuis. Just taps the foot there to keep his balance. Nothing wrong with that. Back out onto this. Really long, straight, and a few smooth patches on this course. There's Eliezer Bet, started today undefeated in Super Prestige. He's really, He's talking about really, it. really impressive, Novin House. Uh, just his timings for getting on and off the bike today. He's been perfect, hasn't he? Just kept that constant speed going. Yeah, I mean, it's. Uh, 
you know, you, you memorize the track in your mind as a crosser, and you just try to play it over, replay, 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 and, and hit the lines the same way, especially if you're riding a couple seconds faster. Um, you're doing something that someone else isn't. I think in the case of Neuvenhaus, he's really shown today that he's the strongest. Uh, he's able to put the most power down. But technically, he's ridden things pretty consistently, lap after lap. You've seen other riders try different techniques to find some time out on the course. But Neuvenhaus has really stayed consistent in his line selection and in his tempo and in his pace. I think you really see that right across the different formats of off-road bike racing, don't you? Consistency often trumps raw speed over the course of a race. For sure. And this part, this part here just requires so much focus. Look at this. Look at the way that he is. Wait back. Just when to be on the gas, when to be off. You can see that it's just a little bit off camber there. But if you come off of that little, like, two to three inch space that you've got there, then you're going to be off that line and you're going to be kind of out of, out of, uh, out of the ability to continue to pedal. So Neuvenhaus riding that section super good. All of these riders have to match what he's doing there and they have to continue to stay consistent. That goes the same for Orts, it goes the same for Vanderputa, it goes the same for Easterbit. Everyone has to ace those sections in order to continue to stay in this one. And Jeremy, will these riders, will they be getting updates around the course from different team staff? Will they know those gaps? Will they know how well they're doing? They certainly will as uh, Looks to be Jens Adams hopping back on his machine there at the top of that one. Lawrence Sweck stretching out his back. That's Jurgen Kuipers right in front of him. Kevin Kuhn behind Sweck there. Everybody coming through right now. You know, I think that they'll be getting some info. At this point in the race, though, Rick, it is a little bit of it is what it is. Like, the, <laughs> the riders know where they're at. There's not a lot of time to be found. They're kind of, they're all oh. doing the best that they can. Front end just going completely. Just. Sweck. Depositing Swig straight to the deck there. Yeah. Swig not finding what again. he wanted today. What's coming the front around end this here. one? Yeah. yeah. That's what it is. We've seen a lot of problems in this section. It's a, it's one or two, one or two sections on this course are like this, where it's sloping, very slightly sloping on mud, and it's it's every year it's the same. You see a rider or two go down that are really accomplished, got a lot of. A lot of big Palmaras, big results, big champions, but they just, you know, it's one second uh, and the bike's out from underneath you and you're on the ground. It's Sweck doesn't just seem to have the, the desire today, though, I have to be honest. I mean, I've watched him his whole career. I've raced against him. He just doesn't have the, 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 the that intensity that I've seen him when he wants to win. Here we go, Lou Ezerbet. Looking to head past Orts now. So Eli Ezerbet was on the ropes earlier in this race, looks to have recuperated. And is now off in hunt of second place. Those three riders looking like they're going to come back together at the end of this one. Jeremy, you may be right. We may get fireworks at the end of this one. I'm not, I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, he's waited and he's waited and he's waited. And now he's ready to kind of do a turn and burn here and see what he can do. He's clearly going to put a, put together a big lap and try to, uh, try to land on the podium in this one. He sees it's close. He sees it's within reach. So he's going to do everything that he can. I don't know if it'll be enough, though. Orts, he's riding some sections that the other guys weren't. Niels Vanaputa, he's going to fight for it, but the pedigree of Ely Easterbit, you know, never count him out. Ely Easterbit has gone straight past Orts now, and it's only in on second place. It won't bother this man, Neuvenhuis. He's out front, but there you go, Easterbit. Right up onto the back wheel of Vanderputa now. them through the sand section as each of them kind of goes left and right all over their machines. Easterbit super focused through this really clearly kind of kicked it down a notch. He's off the bike. Ort's still on his machine. Can he ride this section? Huge cadence. No, he's going to kick his way through. Loses one or two bike lengths. Everybody through though there. Clean. Let's see what comes to the barriers. Now under pressure, everybody's heart rate super high. They know it's coming together as they come down to the final moments of this one. This has got to be a, this is, this is going to be interesting. You see, ah, it went from six to seven to seven to seven. So this is the final round now for this race. Even though we didn't hear the bell, this is the final lap for all these riders. Yep, Norman Hoist leads them out, but the battle really is behind him. These three, Van der Putte, who has raced with such heart throughout the distance of this one, coming under pressure late in the day from Iserbe and Orts, but really, really strong. Van der Putte looking like he's trying to put as much clear air between him and Iserbe as possible. Doesn't want to go toe-to-toe -to -toe in the technical section on the last lap. Orts 
has to find something now if he wants to rally and head for a top three finish. Right now, Joris Neumannhaus at the front of this one in the last lap of this, looking to take a victory here at the Super Prestige, riding these sections super consistently off the machine, the same spot, lap after lap, riding really, really good today here in Merckxplatz. Now you see the battle between the Spanish champion and Ely Isabit there. Isabit on the front, coming over the ramp. He's going to continue. Look at him. He's off the saddle, doing everything that he can to put time into Felipe Orts. Isabit. We saw him get bobbled there earlier in the race, just collects the barriers again, and that's why there's that gap is just extended again as they head now on to the final lap. One to go here in Merck's class. Moving house already in the tech zone with a bike change. Ben Naputa holding first, that gap. His first super prestige victory of the season. Bit. What a fighter this man is. Never knows when he's beaten. Fancy's having a good dig at the end of this one. Carrying good speed through there. Niels van der Poot. Nelpersen, the Koenig rider in the blue. Digging deep. Keeping that gap out front. Can Felipe Orts, the man in fourth place, can he find something and get himself up into the top three? late in the day. Well, fan of Orts would love to see it. Can he do it? That's another question as he's coming through right now. He's got Smashes big pressure. He's his way up that climb. Yeah, he does. That's what I'm saying. He's riding stuff that others aren't, and he knows that. He's going to need to rely on that and lean on that in this last lap. He's going to have to put it all together if he wants to match. There's Clearly, the other riders are stronger, but technically, Orts is better. And so it's where does the tables turn? How does it all play out? How does the balance beam get walked through today. It's going to be tough, but Orts can't do it. He's just got to really dig. He's going to be on the end of his rope, but he's going to do everything that he can to try to hit this podium today. Well, is this man going to be our first Dutch winner in the Super Prestige this season? In the elite men's class. Through the tech zone, Orts behind him. Ezerbit's pursuit off Van Der Poot. just stymied slightly by a couple of mistakes late on that lap, but there's one from Van Der Poot. Ezerbit off the bike as well, though. Oh, we Jeremy, didn't Jeremy has his hands on his head in disbelief. <laughs> we get to see Orts, though. Orts, does he ride it? I don't know, but will it come back as we get a little bit of a break up of the screen here? But what's happening? All of this is coming down to this last lap. Everybody's on the limit right now, Rick. That's what this tells me. Van de Puta doing everything that he can to keep Easterbit at bay. Easterbit doing everything he can to get back to Van de Puta. Orts riding is within himself as best as he can to try to technically get back to these two riders up front. He's in it, but can he pull it off? Where, what are the gaps looking like? It looks like Ezerbet moving back towards Van de Puta now. Woo! The wind is blowing, man. The rain's going sideways. All of these riders know what's on tap. It's one mistake, and that's off the podium. Everyone wants to do it today, but can they? Neuvenhuis, he's been absolutely fantastic today. Well deserving. Off the win, if he can get that trek to the line. But behind him, it's kicking off. There's fireworks. It's Van der Putten seeing the one thing you do want to see in your rear view mirror late in the day in a cyclocross race, and that is Ellie Isabet with a bit between his teeth, hunting you down. I think Van de has got this. He's going to do everything that he can here. He's going to fight for the front. Easterbit sees that second place is available, but I don't know if he's going to get there in the end. Van de Puta, a very strong sprinter, but definitely five to six years younger, I think, than uh, than Ely Easterbit. Easterbit, 26, 27 years old. Van de Puta, 22, 23. So right now, these two riders, definitely different levels of experience, both, though with tons of races in their leg. Van de Puta down through that section clean. Easterbit also through there, taking that risk again, Rick. Absolutely flat out there from Ezerbit, and it's not the size of the dog in the fight, it's the size of the fight in the dog. And Elie Ezerbit late in the day will fancy a good go at this. There is the race leader, Neuvenhuis. He's been absolutely superb today. He's never looked uncomfortable either, Jeremy. Never, we've never seen him really breathing really hard or looking pained or in trouble, he's just controlled it perfectly from the front and 
concentrating and hitting all his marks and that consistency is paying dividends. Look at these two behind him though, right together now. Yeah, for sure. You can see, I bet, uh, I bet the core work and the stability work and all of the strength work that the Balawasa Trek team does, you see it with Sven, you see it with uh, his son there, all up in the gym all the time. That really helps a rider as Orcs now has a problem on this steep embankment. Look at this though, Ezerbet bobbing, weaving behind Van der Putte. How long for though as we drop back to the front of the race? Noven Huys walking that tightrope through there. Ezerbet through into second now. Van der Putte needs to scramble if he can get past them again. Roared on by the crowd. Whoa, big battle here. Van der Putte going up the inside. Will he get there? No, he won't. Closes the door. Ezerbet slides through there. He's got the front in the single track section. We know it's a short finish line, but a Fairly long sprint on the cobblestone, so you want to stay super tight. Oh, big bob of the head from Vanderpoot. He can't match it. Vanderpoot, uh, he can't match it. The head shaking. Oh, agony etched all over his face. Niels Vanderpoot has been superb in this race. He's ridden the majority off at the second place. But Ellie Isabel is about to mug him for second step on the podium. <laughs> oh, oh nice. man. What a race we had here today. These guys are going all in Easter pit through the cards down in the final 10, 15 minutes of the race. Already a hand up there to his mechanics from Joris Neuvenhaus as he comes through. I can't tell if this one's out or if Van der has got one more big push in him. Van der Putten needs to find something here. As you say, he will have a sniff of a sprint finish. It's a short start finish straight, but it is straight once they round that right hand corner so if he can just pull up to the back of his bit this one coming right down to the wire ellie is never knows when he's beaten that's why he's leading this series he's on he's the edge of his limit though he's on the edge of his limit easter bit off the line there into that uh, into that middle section which is not the line you want to be in it's harder and in more dense, uh, it's really heavy there. Van der Putte able to take a couple seconds back on that. It's a long shot, so it looks wider than it is, but Niels Van der Putte not out of this one yet, absolutely on the edge of him. The question and the final round of this is who makes a mistake and who doesn't right now, Rick? Yep, who can keep it calm, keep it together as they come round this right-hander back out in the open across the field, heading towards the boards, Neuvenhuis. Neatly done. This, this will be Neuvenhaus's first European victory of this season. He did take the major Taylor Cross race here in the weekend before Waterloo World Cup, which kicked off the season, but this will be his first victory in Europe this season for the Trek Balawasa team. What a, t what a way to kick off this busy festive period as well with a performance like that. He's been absolutely superb. Wizard, but checks over his shoulder, opted for the bike change, found a put up, plugged on. Here he comes though. Neuven Hoys looking absolutely superb today. Start to finish. We knew he was going to be one of the fast starters off the line, but he's never looked back since then. Just ticked off section after section. And there, yeah, Vanderpoot is stretching the back again. Here we go though. At the front. Joris Neuvenhuis. A fight to get it done for the Balwasa Trek Lions. Yet again, taste victory in 2023. Super prestige. A superb win for Joris Neuvenhuis. What a victory that was. Rode a phenomenal race today. The battle for second behind looks to be coming more closely in line, but can Van der Poote do anything to bring this back? Once over the barriers, Easter bit. Now Van der Poote to clean also over the barricades. Rick, can they do anything? Is this going to come down to a sprint finish, or is Van der Poote just going to have to settle for third spot as his head's going left and right? Van der Poote is on the ropes here. Has he got one last knockout punch left in him? Orts fought so bravely throughout the first two thirds of this race, but it's just moved away from him. Is a bit to me here, looking like he may well have just done enough for that last technical section to distance the big man sufficiently before heading towards the sprint finish. But you can't take your eyes off it. This is cyclocross. Just one mistake from either of these riders could decide the points for second place. And as you say, Jeremy, it's worth a pound or two this one, or a euro or two, I should say. <laughs> 
Let's see what happens here. Both the riders off. It does look like Easterbit's going to be able to finish this one off. This is the part where he had a, a tricky section last time where he fell off his machine and lost a couple of seconds deciding to play it safe this time, running that section. Vandeputa follows suit back on the machine right through here. Easterbit with the last lap surge, Rick, to be able to take yeah. second spot. Checks over his shoulder, sees that the damage is done. Elias Bit. it wasn't the win. But it was an absolutely superb performance. Elias but home in second place in Merck's Blast in the Super Prestige. This man who held that position for so long can hold his head high though. Niels van der Putte for Alphys and de Koenig. Perfect day out for both these riders. Him, behind him, Orts shakes his head. Again, just gets better every time we see him between the tape and 2023. A perfect day out for everybody. Everybody rode a good race, you know. It's just uh, some days you lose to a stronger rider. This is Jurgen Kuipers, Rick, finishing this one out as well, very strongly. Great ride from Kuipers today. We haven't seen a whole lot of him, but overcame that challenge of Lawrence Swick. About the halfway point of this one. Rounds out the top five. Absolutely superb result for him. Behind him, Kevin Kuhn, across the line, the Swissman. This was this group that we saw really bar to bar for the first half of the race. There's Adams, there's Swick. And we have been treated to an absolute battle here in Merck's Blast. Here's how it went down. Van der Putte is a bit all in the mix right from the start. But it was that man, Neumannhaus, who was inch perfect throughout. Never in trouble. And he got the job done in the fourth round of Super Prestige 2023. I've been Rick McLaughlin, he's been Jeremy Powers. Thank you for joining us. We've had a superb time today.